you can't go very far without seeing some form of measurement. Uh, any of us who have taken an Uber know that we are going to get rated and we're going to rate the driver at the end of the journey. If you're at school, at seven years old, you're taking key stage assessments and the school will be evaluated. In the charitable sector, it's really important to understand the way things are measured because otherwise you may get the wrong idea about how successful something is. What I have noticed in my research is that this notion of impact as a measure of success has become increasingly prevalent in the charitable sector. In the last 15 years, there's been a complete change in the kind of language used to describe success in the social sector. Private sector social investors with experience in finance and business are coming into the sector and insisting upon a greater degree of, of rigour and uh, investment analysis. Now, these are a really interesting bunch of people. They have connections with government, business and with finance. And it's very interesting if you analyse their backgrounds very high proportion of them have gone to elite universities. They share common values. Many of them have worked at a cluster of investment banks and strategy consulting firms. And they speak the same language. They have certain notions of what constitutes good performance. These social investment professionals determine which organisations are worthy of receiving social investment financing. And the effect that they have is to shift the language and to shift the uh, notions of success. Inevitably, there are a whole host of assumptions that we make when we are trying to whittle down the success of, a, of an organisation into just a few numbers. And because we don't necessarily make those assumptions explicit, it's really hard to make inferences from those numbers. When we think about the way in which we measure success in the private sector, we look at, say, profit. However, when we go to something in the social sector, and when we're looking at social value creation in particular, there are great technical and conceptual difficulties with measuring the effect you have on someone's life in the long term. Because funding is so important for social organisations, a new phenomenon is emerging that I label business washing where social organisations use business language and social impact reporting purely for the purpose of image management with their potential funders. It is the analogue of the greenwashing that we see in corporate social responsibility reporting by corporates trying to suggest that they are somehow greener than they really are. One of the issues which I have seen emerging is a slight backlash at the level of the staff within these organisations against what they see as an excess of social impact reporting. Some of them feel uncomfortable about the increasing use of statistics and financial figures uh, to evaluate what they're doing. We can see that problems may arise from the commercialisation of charitable actions by looking at the case of paying for blood donation. People feel good about themselves when they give blood and that's really important to understand when we think about what motivates them to give blood. Social scientists have argued that contrary to what economic theory tells us, paying for blood can actually reduce the supply of blood donations because potential donors feel their moral action has somehow become no more than a financial transaction and their intrinsic motivation is destroyed. The same issue may arise in the social sector when we begin to financialise the outcomes of charitable work. Over the last 15 years, the growth of social investment has led to a great focus on social impact as a measure of success. Social impact measurement is intended to direct funds to those social organisations which make the most difference to society. But potential motivational issues may exist because staff at social purpose organisations may find business and financial descriptions of their work demotivating. 